It's Kyder at Coach.com, and this is a very interesting case. This is a case that's done by a novice surgeon, and we're going to run into some serious complications here. And the complication is going to happen right about now. Watch carefully. To create the capsorexis, the novice surgeon pokes into the capsule, isn't sure what he's grabbing, and starts pulling. It's a little bit flipped over, and here's where you should stop and grab and rotate. Instead, he pulls straight towards him and right out of the eye. Wow, what's the problem now? Well, we can't continue this capsular axis, and we have a large area, superiorly subincisionally, that's radialized out towards the lens equator. So what we're going to do, I'm intervening now. I'm sitting in the assistance position, and we are making a can opener type capsulotomy. We'll do this for 360 degrees. And why do we do this? Because the can opener capsulotomy has many areas where the forces that we'll have during surgery can be spread outwards. If you just have the one radialized area, all the force will go towards that one area and it can zip around to the posterior capsule and rip the capsule right open. But by having many areas, we're able to avoid that issue because the forces are spread out equally. Now, there's no vitreous prolapse. We're still okay here. The nucleus has been hydrodissected. I'm going to help right now. Just using a cannula and the chopper, let me help split the nucleus. There we go. Into two halves. Now, when the novice surgeon puts in the phaco probe, I can be the chopper hand and help bring the pieces towards the phaco probe. So now you're seeing two surgeons operating. Straight ahead, coming from the bottom of the screen, which is the patient's superior position, that's the novice surgeon. And to the right, the chopper, that's the professor. Now, as we feed the nucleus into the phaco probe, to emulsify it, things are going okay. So we can still have a nice normal case here. We just have to be very careful. Now it's time for removal of the cortex. Very important here that we're sufficiently deep in the eye and under the anterior capsule rim. Avoid grabbing those flaps of the capsule. We just want to take the cortex out now. So nice and easy, very careful, removing the cortex as best we can. There's a little sub-incisional material there. Now, to make things easier, we'll just have the novice surgeon keep the eye probe in the eye on position one. I'll go through the side port with just a 27-gauge blunt cannula, and I'll manually aspirate the sub-incisional cortex, and this will allow us to clean that up and access that quite easily. So removing the last little bits here of the lens material, the cortex, that looks great. Now don't pull out of the eye, stop. Keep the eye probe in the eye, and now I will inject cohesive viscoelastic through that side port. That prevents the anterior chamber from collapsing and prevents the caps from coming forwards or breaking. Here comes the IOL insertion. Now you could put a three-piece lens here. It has more options for placement that could even go in the sulcus. But we're gonna put a single piece here. It's gonna go in the caps or bag. Now you're wondering, why did it get so dim in your view? Well, the novice surgeon is still learning how to use the FACO foot pedal and the microscope pedal and inadvertently dimmed the light and made it very dim here. So I'll go ahead and help, and I rotated the lens so the haptics are horizontal. So in your view and also in the patient's eye, they're horizontal. Now, we're going to be very careful in removing viscoelastic. The novice surgeon wants to go under the lens. I don't think this is a great idea. And when he does that, bam, he just grabbed the capsule. And the capsule has completely ripped down the middle. So now the posterior capsule is wide open. But luckily, it's a narrow slit down the middle. So the rest of the viscoelastic is removed. We're very fortunate. We still have an anti-hyaloid uh, face that's intact. There is still no vitreous prolapse. And fortunately, the lens is or, uh, oriented horizontally. Therefore, this is a well-supported lens still. Again, don't let the AC collapse. Let's come out of the eye carefully. And while coming out, I'm going to inject BSS 
to prevent that AZ from collapsing. Now we can seal up the incisions and call it a day. We've checked, we are very fortunate there is no vitreous prolapse. The lens is very nicely positioned and actually quite well supported. Yes, there's that central slit opening in the posterior capsule. Fortunately, it won't pose much of an issue. So what do we learn in this case? There are a lot of great pearls here, but most importantly, you've got to be very careful in creating your capsular rexus. If it starts to go out, you need to stop and intervene.